bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity, Your Master Key to Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. How about a religious guide to wealth and success? Catherine Ponder thinks she has the master key and this is your chance to learn from her. Who should read The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity and why? Long before positive thinking, affirmations and the law of attraction became parts of common knowledge, Catherine Ponder made them a thing through using a few different words, radiation, attraction, visualization, circulation, and the law of creative prosperity. Readers of self-help new thought books should definitely have a look, especially if they are religious and those who believe in the power of positive thinking shouldn't think twice before buying this book. There's a reason why they call Ponder the Norman Vincent Peel among lady ministers. About Catherine Ponder. Catherine Ponder is an American Unity Church minister and best-selling author of a few New Thought prosperity theme books. Born in 1927, Catherine Ponder received degrees in both business and education in North Carolina before being ordained as a minister in 1958. Her first ministry was in Birmingham, Alabama, after which she moved to Austin, Texas, and then to San Antonio. In 1973, she moved to Palm Desert, from where she heads Global Ministry, having founded Unity Church Worldwide, an affiliate of Unity Church. Published in 1962, Ponder's first book, The Dynamic Law of Prosperity, made her a national celebrity. Amongst all her other books treat the same subject. The Prosperity Secrets of the Ages, Open Your Mind to Prosperity, The Millionaire of Genesis, The Millionaire Moses, The Millionaire from Nazareth, Secret of Unlimited Prosperity, and a few others. The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity Summary Dear Minister, please redefine prosperity for me. You're probably too young to remember it, but the relatively moderate eight-month Eisenhower recession was a pretty big deal six decades ago. Practically the only decline during the quarter century long economic boom after the Second World War. The recession of 1958 caused many American businesses to shut down and many Americans to lose money. A lot of money. Catherine Ponder had barely started the fourth decade of her life back then and she had just been ordained as a Unity Church minister, merely two years after receiving degrees in business and education. Naturally, Due to this pretty unique combination of skills set against the backdrop of a worldwide recession, she received a lot of questions from the members of her congregation back in 1958. The result, a series of prosperity classics and finally, in 1962, a debut book which made her pretty famous even among non-religious success seekers. Why? Because unlike most religious people, Catherine Ponder didn't despise money and she offered her followers a pretty good reason why. No one can serve two masters. You're probably already mentally quoting the Bible, Matthew 6.24. Either you hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. True, says Ponder, but there's a difference between serving money and merely earning them. Money's for money's sake is bad and godless, but there's nothing wrong with earning money while serving God. In other words, a rich person can enter the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 19, 23, 26, if he isn't attached to his money, but to God. In fact, one could argue that it's a bit more difficult for a poor one. Let us be done with thinking of poverty as a virtue. It's a common vice. Visualize your desires. After doing away with the apparently false equation, money equals sin, Ponder introduces a new one, this time a correct one, the guiding principles of her book, Visualizations of Desires Equal Success. Visualizations of Desires Equal Success. She's not the first person, religious or non-religious, to proclaim this, but she is certainly one of the numbered few who did manage to popularize the concept long before Rhonda Byrne's secret turned it into a piece of common knowledge. A decade and a half before Shakti Galwin, Ponta suggests that regular visualization of your biggest dreams will inevitably lead to their realizations. Almost unsurprisingly, she finds evidence for this in the Bible and in James Allen's seminal classic on the subject, As a Man Thinketh. As a man thinketh within himself, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. And later the words of Job. 
thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and light shall shine upon thy way. Job 22.28 From the philosopher James Allen, I learned, Through his thoughts, man holds the key to every situation and contains with himself that transforming and regenerative agency by which he may make himself what he wills. In other words, thinking happy thoughts results in happy events. Bad thoughts and doubts lead to misfortunes. Write it down, make it happen. Write it down, make it happen. Thinking big and good is merely the first step. Writing your thoughts apparently further hacks this fireproof system. In other words, even though God is an all-knowing being, he too needs some help. Writing down your thoughts should help him turn them into reality more efficiently. Another important thing, even though they say that the devil is in the details, Ponder is adamant that you must be specific when writing down your goals. Don't just say that you want to be rich. Say that, for example, you want to earn $10 million within the next half a decade. And just like Jim Carrey, you'll probably be surprised by the outcome. Ponder writes of a man, a successful businessman, lecturer and writer, who dare to write out 100s of the times some simple words as to how he wished things to be, rather than about fretting how they appeared at the moment. And she advised that you do the same. Because if you are content to idly drift in a stream of small events and small expectations, chances are you probably will. Ponder often asks people to write down and regularly use this basic statement as a starting point to help expand and intensify their constructive desires. I desire the highest and best in life, and now I draw the highest and best to me. And then it's time to sketch out a plan. Remember, write it down, make it happen. Write it down, make it happen. Radiation and attraction. Now, why should all this work? Because Ponder says there are some unwritten laws which guide the universe, and the one which should interest you the most is the law of radiation and attraction. To phrase it in the form of our beloved Beatles quote, in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. The love you take is equal to the love you make. Radiate and you will attract. Or, in more common words, give and you shall receive. Give and you shall receive. Yep, we just quoted the Bible yet again. If I could shout one message to the whole world regarding life secrets, writes Catherine Ponder, it would be this. You cannot get something for nothing, but you can have the best of everything when you give full measure for the good you wish to receive. Once again, Ponder makes known to her readers that this is neither a new idea nor one that should be dismissed by even the most skeptical of readers. Ralph Waldo Emerson, she reminds us, might have been describing the law of giving and receiving or radiation and attraction when he wrote, Great hearts send forth steadily the secret forces that incessantly draw great events, and whatever the mind of a man goes, nature will accompany him, no matter what the path. The trick is to be one of those with a great heart. And if you were thinking and radiating great thoughts and expectancies of success and prosperity instead of failure, trouble and limitation, then you are. Tithing and circulation. We know what you're thinking. The only thing more old-fashioned than the word tithing is probably the practice of tithing. In case you don't know what we're talking about, tithing is the practice of giving away the first tenth of your income to, most often, a religious organization. But can I give away things mentally, you say? According to Ponder, no you cannot. And even God says, Matthew 23, 23, Woo to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. There's even a deeper reason for giving away parts of your income to an organization respecting God. That way, you prove to yourself that you're still serving one master, i.e. God. And since he is the real source of your money, Moses says so, Thou shalt remember Jehovah the God, for he that giveth thee power to great wealth. He'll make sure to give it twice the amount back. Don't believe us? Well, John D. Rockefeller did this abundantly, and he only got richer and richer for that. God gave me my money, said he, every time someone asked him, Why all this charity, John? 
which was most probably not once. There is basically one problem in life, congestion. There is basically one solution, circulation. Systematic giving is therefore a powerful practice that blesses every phase of our lives as it keeps us attuned to the wealth of the universe. Key lessons from the dynamic laws of prosperity. Number one, you can't serve two masters, but you can be rich and still serve just one. Number two, the law of creative prosperity and writing down your desires. Number three, radiation, attraction, tithing and circulation. You can't serve two masters, but you can be rich and still serve just one. According to the Bible, Matthew 6.24, no one can serve two masters. Either you hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is usually taken to mean that being rich is incompatible with being a good God-serving man. And in the case you have any doubts, there's also that eye of a needle story. I tell you the truth, saith Jesus. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 19.23-26 Well, Catherine Ponder is a Unity Church minister, and the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity is a book about money. How does she explain these two quotes? Well, she says, neither of the two states that money is bad. Both of them suggest that money is bad when it becomes an objective in itself. In other words, if you are too attached to money and you want to earn them for their sake, then you've forgotten about God. But if you still pray, go to church and give some of your money away, preferably to God's organizations on earth, then there's nothing wrong in earning them. The Law of Creative Prosperity and Writing Down Your Desires The Law of Creative Prosperity, writes Catherine Ponder, is to take your deep-seated desires and instead of suppressing them as impossible dreams, begin expressing them constructively through deciding what they really are and then doing something very simple but very powerful about them. Write them down. Why? Because writing down your desires and formulating them in a list or a potential plan clarifies the desires in your mind and to quote Ponder yet again, the mind produces definite results only when it has been given and definite ideas through which to work. Let's rephrase Ponder for you. The law of creative prosperity is how the law of attraction was called half a century ago, and it works best when you are the most specific. Radiation, attraction, tithing, and circulation. The law of creative prosperity is grounded in the basic law of the universe, says Ponder. In the end, you receive slash attract as much as you give slash radiate. That's why Ponder advises her readers to give away a tenth of their income to the church, thereby proving that they are not serving mammon, but God. This practice is called tithing, and in itself merely a colony of a higher law, the law of circulation. There is basically one problem in life, writes Ponder, congestion. There is basically one solution, circulation. The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity quotes, Let us be done with thinking of poverty as a virtue. It is a common vice. Through his thoughts, man holds the key to every situation and contains within himself that transforming and regenerative agency by which he may make himself what he wills. I desire the highest and best in life, and now draw the highest and best to me. You cannot get something for nothing, but you can have the best of everything when you give full measure for the good you wish to receive. And last, there is basically one problem in life, congestion. There is basically one solution circulation. And that's a wrap on the dynamic laws of prosperity. Now, if you want to contribute to Best Book Bits and do some audio book summaries, email me at info at bestbookbits.com, get involved with the channel, or DM me on Instagram at bestbookbits to do some voice talent and do some book summaries. Now, if you want this PDF book summary via email, pop your email in the link below, and I'll send this straight to you and get access to others through there. Now, you can sub subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the notification bell, like, share, and comment. We're also on Spotify. All our audios get uploaded first on Spotify, then YouTube second, so follow us there. Now, if you want to support Best Book Bits, we have a range of products and services. First off, Success in 50 Steps, the proven formula that works. 
I've taken over 500 books and condensed them down into one personal development book over 13 years. So grab your copy now, Success in 50 Steps. Now, if you're serious about achieving your dreams and want to do it quicker than you can by yourself, I do coaching and mentoring. So click the link below to apply for my coaching and mentoring program. I've also put together my top 150 best book bit summaries in PDF format, over five volumes, two and a half thousand pages. Click the link below to grab your copy. And if you are serious about having your best year ever, I've put all my greatest information into 28 steps to making your best year ever course. So click the link below to check it out. Follow us at bestbookbits.com, the world's largest free book summary website in video, written, and audio format. You can follow us on Instagram at bestbookbits. We run a free book club on Facebook, so check us out there. And if you want to be updated with the latest book summaries via email, pop your email in the link below and never miss a book summary. You can also support us on Patreon. Check out our top 50 videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponta. Take care. Bye-bye now.